Hello there you guys, welcome to one of my live videos and stay. I'm just to be officially um, updating you on some more current transfer rumours um, and gossip so if you do consider drop your likes and if you do consider uh, subscribe uh, to the channel um, as always. So lots to negotiate um, on this uh, video uh, today but I am going to give you some more um, additional um, information um, in regards uh, to Bruno Fernandes of course um, as I have been um, updating you um, on a regular uh, basis um, and all that. So reportedly now, um, according uh, to Sky Sports um, and all that now, reportedly you know, Manchester United um, have made a uh, breakthrough um, in uh, Bruno Fernandes uh, Bruno Fernandes uh, talks um, and all that and now reportedly uh, Bruno Fernandes um, agent um, has uh, you know uh, co come uh, to England um, and all that you know to thrash out um, a deal uh, for um, his client and now reportedly Manchester United um, have agreed a £100,000 a week contract uh, with Bruno Fernandes uh, no fee um, has yet you know come to um, an agreement and I think the actual fee um, is a stumbling block um, at the moment you know of Bruno Fernandes uh, making um, his move uh, to Manchester United but I do believe um, of course um, everything um, has been um, agreed but Sky Sports have mentioned you know that Manchester United of course um, are still chasing uh, Bruno uh, Fernandes because we do know Bruno Fernandes um, has been subject to a lot of uh, transfer uh, speculation um, he has been widely spoken about uh, throughout uh, the course um, of this window um, and all that so hopefully you know we can uh, come to um, an agreement um, on a fee uh, so the transfer saga of Bruno Fernandes you know do, does still uh, continue uh, to persist reportedly uh, Sporting has been um, have said you know they want um, around uh, 55 million pounds uh, reportedly Manchester United um, are reluctant you know to meet that and reportedly you know we're only willing to pay um, up to around uh, £31 uh, million pounds, uh, for um, his services but I do believe everything uh, more or less um, has been um, agreed um, except uh, the fee uh, reportedly you know, it says uh, we've agreed uh, personal terms uh, with Bruno Fernandes because it did confirm um, on Monday that reportedly you know, we'd held uh, negotiations uh, with Bruno Fernandes uh, representatives and all that and now we have uh, come to um, an agreement um, on the personal terms and it does say you know, we have now uh, reached um, an agreement uh, with Sport and Lisbon but no fee um, of course um, has yet you know, come to um, uh, an uh, agreement but obviously you know, a lot of reports uh, reflected out uh, last week week, you know, saying that, you know, we've been in negotiations uh, with Bruno Fernandes' um, agent um, and all that, you know, over getting um, a deal uh, secured. Um, obviously, we do know that the likes of Liverpool were in for him, um, also, you know, Tottenham were in for him, also Manchester City uh, were in for him um, at one point, and obviously, you know, reflecting back around uh, seven uh, weeks ago, you know, it, lo it was looking uh, it was looking likely, you know, that Manchester City uh, were going to get a uh, deal uh, concluded for Bruno Fernandes, but obviously, as it did uh, confirm, you know, Manchester City um, had withdrawn uh, their interest, so I do believe now, anyway, you know, it's only Manchester United um, in the running uh, to sign uh, Bruno Fernandes Fernandes because Liverpool have withdrawn their interest also you know Tottenham and that um, have withdrawn uh, their interest so hopefully you know we can uh, get uh, this deal um, over the line but I think Manchester United have been considered the favourites you know to sign Bruno Fernandes um, at least to have last uh, two uh, to three weeks obviously we do know that talks um, have been ongoing you know between Manchester United Sport and Lisbon and Bruno Fernandes um, agent and that you know in several uh, weeks um, and all that but no fee um, of course um, has yet you know come to um, an agreement but Ole Gunnar Solskjaer did instruct Ted Woodward was it uh, last week if I'm right you know to speed, speed up um, a deal uh, to sign uh, Bruno Fernandes so it's looking very imminent that Bruno Fernandes um, is going to be um, our third signing uh, this summer. Obviously, you know, so far uh, this summer, you know, we have got two players um, on the board. Obviously, it's our first two signings um, under the Elegant and Solskjaer um, Herrera. Obviously, you know, we've got Daniel James uh, for £18 million. Pounds. Obviously, as well, you know, we've got Anwan Basaka um, in the deal uh, with um, around uh, £58 million. Pounds. If you do want to count uh, the add-ons, that's obviously, you know, taking Elegant and Solskjaer's net spend um, up to around uh, £68 million pounds, uh, so far uh, this summer. But for, so far, you know, for the entire term of this window, you know, we have been made mainly, you know, focusing um, on the incomings um, and all that. But I think the club um, also, you know, need to focus um, on the outgoing. So we do need to do this, you know, to uh, balance um, our books. But I think the club need to orchestrate on, you know, currently uh, selling players, you know, to help us, you know, generate funds um, and rebuild uh, the squad um, and all that. Um, because obviously, you know, we've only been uh, giving them um, £100 million pounds, uh, to spend. But I do believe now Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's priorities, you know, will be to recommend a central defender to come in. And he'll also, you know, want to uh, add a reinforcement term in that midfield. Uh, from Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's uh, perspective, you know, he actually, you know, did basically say, you know, he wants to get um, at least uh, one more signing there uh, confirmed, you know, by the time, you know, we do go on pre season tour um, in Australia. And I do believe, you know, we do go on pre season tour uh, within the next uh, five um, or six days. But I did say to you, didn't I, on Monday, and I said to you earlier on, you know, I expect Manchester United, you know, to get uh, two uh, signings uh, confirmed uh, this week and I do believe them two signings are probably going to be Bruno Fernandes from Sport in Lisbon um, and Sean Longstaff uh, from Newcastle um, and all that but like I said you know with Bruno Fernandes I really really like him um, a lot like I said he's primarily um, an attacking uh, midfielder um, he is um, only uh, 24 uh, years um, of age so he has still got a hell of a lot of uh, years um, ahead of him and I do believe you know if he comes to the Premier League he will succeed in the Premier League um, he will exceed um, expectation levels um, in the Premier League but you know we do need reinforcements in that midfield and like I did say I don't think it, you know it's um 
I don't think Bruno Fernandes' move to Manchester United um, is, dependent, is dependent on, you know, what happens there uh, with Paul Pogba. Because I think even if Paul Pogba does remain um, at the football club, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, you know, still is keen on adding uh, two uh, new um, additions um, in that midfield. But Bruno Fernandes scored 31 goals um, in all competitions uh, last season uh, for Sporting uh, Lisbon. He's been there um, a couple of uh, years. Obviously spent the majority of his career in Italy when he was younger, you know, with the likes of San Pandaria um, and London I think he also, you know, played uh, for Novria, uh, did uh, Bruno uh, Fernandes. But I think he's still got four years remaining on his contract uh, with Sporting Lisbon. You know, he is under contract with them um, until 2023. But I think Bruno Fernandes um, is actually, you know, keen on making the move to Manchester United because he believes it will be beneficial uh, for his career. And he did say he's attracted to the history um, and mystique um, of Manchester United. But we have been, the talks have been ongoing between Man United between Manchester United and Sporting Lisbon for several weeks. Also, I confirmed the other week that Liverpool um, had been in negotiation with Bruno Fernandes' agent because it came out a couple of weeks ago saying that Liverpool had put around um, £40 million pound bidding for him. But Sporting Lisbon had blatantly made it clear, yeah, you know, they basically know one um, in the region of around uh, £55 million. Pounds. So I do... I, I, do believe basically, you know, Manchester United, you know, should just pay what Sporting has been um, are currently uh, demanding. Uh, because reflecting back uh, last summer, you know, we spent fifty million pounds um, on Fred. Obviously, Fred um, is one of um, our most um, expensive uh, players, and Fred hasn't got a great pedigree. He was a fundamental player um, at Shakhtar the Nest, but he hasn't really replicated this since he's come to Manchester United. And Fred, you can't put Fred in Bruno Fernandes' caliber um, or level um, and all that. Um, and I still don't know if he's a long-term solution for Manchester United. Fred, I was impressed with some of his performances towards uh, the towards uh, the back end um, of last season but still don't know um, if Fred um, is the current uh, long term uh, solution uh, for Manchester United so I, I do believe you know we should just pay what you know Sporting has been um, are currently demanding but we reportedly know we're only preparing to pay up to £31 million uh, for um, his services but the terms have been agreed you know we've reached an agreement um, and all that now reportedly the contract's been agreed we've agreed a £100,000 a week contract with Bruno Fernandes Bruno Fernandes' agent I think has come to England uh, this evening you know to um, you know thrash out a deal you know for um, his client and all that so everything has been agreed um, except to uh, the fee. So I do believe Manchester United will probably hold more extensive talks uh, with his agent um, and all that over coming to um, an agreement um, on a com on a current uh, fee. So hopefully the Bruno, Bruno Fernandes transfer to Manchester United, you know, should be uh, completed, uh, so fully announced uh, sometime uh, this week. So I'm very, very um, happy um, about this. Um, and I do believe anyway, if Paul probably does leave, obviously, you know, Bruno Fernandes um, is actually no adequate uh, replacement um, and all that. Um, Obviously, with Sean Longstaff, um, I've been giving you an update um, about Sean Longstaff um, on a regular uh, basis. Um, obviously, you know, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has instructed Manchester United, you know, to get a, de uh, 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 you know, a deal uh, completed uh, for Sean Longstaff uh, sometime uh, this week. So he wants the signing secured for Sean Longstaff uh, this week. Sean Longstaff, obviously, you know, um, is a cheaper solution uh, than Bruno Fernandes, but obviously, you know, Bruno Fernandes um, is more um, experienced. Um, I think, you know, Newcastle have said, you know, they want in the region of around uh, £20 million, uh, £20 million pounds, uh, plus um, add on. So looking at it, Ultimately, you know, Newcastle value Sean Longstaff at around 25 or 30 million pounds. He did say Manchester United um, have been in talks uh, with Newcastle um, about this, but we obviously want to come to an agreement on a fee. I think we are preparing to reportedly you know, put a bid in around uh, 15 million pounds uh, plus add-ons uh, for Sean Longstaff. He has a bit, he has had, he has gained a um, bit of um, experience. Um, obviously, you know, he made his senior debut uh, for Newcastle um, in December um, of last year, and I think he actually you know flourished um, under Rafael Benitez's uh, guidance last season. I think he played um, around um, 11 games, and he did uh, you know put uh, some good. Uh, Forms he's in. Obviously, he's under contract uh, with Newcastle um, until 2022, and he recently, you know, did uh, sign uh, this new contract term um, and all that. But I think we have been given a boost in our pursuit of Sean Longstaff. Obviously, you know, following the departure um, of Rafael Benitez. Um, but yeah, you know, Solskjaer wants to get uh, this uh, deal um, over the line. Um, I think he's primarily a central midfielder. Um, he's um, only uh, 21 uh, years of age, plus um, he's British. And obviously, you know, there's been so quite a lot of British players on our agenda this summer. Obviously, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer wants to recruit British uh, talents uh, to Manchester United. And obviously, you know, he has worked out um, his transfer strategies, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Obviously, he wants to recommend um, a number of uh, young players uh, to come in that can grow, develop um, and emulate um, into superstars. So Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's policy is getting um, the pursuit um, of young players. Um, and, and, and Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, I know, believes that he's a uh, following um, following um, a policy you know, that did uh, prove uh, successful um, under um, Alex Ferguson. But I think, you know, if Sean Longstaff comes to Manchester United, I think it will rejuvenate his career. You know, it will definitely you know, take um, his footballing career to the next level. And I do believe Sean Longstaff, you know, has got all the ingredients, you know, required, you know, to become um, a huge success at Manchester United, you know, if he does currently uh, come in. But I think, you know, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has basically said to Manchester United, you know, basically just meet, you know, what Newcastle um, are uh, demanding. Because at the end of the day, you know, um, he is available uh, for a reasonable figure. I still believe that Sean Longstaff is regaining full fitness 
uh, I do believe, uh, because obviously, you know, he had sustained an e-ligament injury uh, back um, in March, and obviously, you know, he didn't play the last couple of months um, of last season, you know, due to this knee ligament injury, um, he had uh, currently uh, sustained, so I do believe he's still uh, regaining uh, full fitness um, and all that. He also began his career with Newcastle, I think he also had loan spells there uh, with Kilmarnock um, and Blackpool, so hopefully we can get the deal uh, completed for Sean Longstaff this week. So I do believe our next two signings are going to be Bruno Fernandes and uh, Sean uh, Longstaff. Um... But we need to see uh, vast improvements, of course, uh, going on um, into this season. You know, that's very, very um, essential because last season we disappointed, disappoint, you know, we finished sixth and, of course, uh, we didn't uh, win um, any silver. And it's very essential that we do get our number one uh, targets uh, this summer because, obviously, we didn't get anyone in January. Obviously, reflecting back last summer, you know, we didn't uh, get um, our number one uh, targets. And I know it's going to be hard for us, you know, to attract uh, players uh, to elite level because, obviously, we're not in Champions League football for next season. And, obviously, you know, we are competing in the Europa League next season. And it's also going to be hard for us, you know, to uh, convince um, our imperative uh, players uh, to remain um, at the football club but I think we need to sell players anyway you know to help us generate funds and rebuild the squad like I said we need to sell Damien we need to sell Rojo and I think for their departures we can generate around £30 million pounds, well, well between 25 or £30 million because Damien and Rojo have both enjoyed difficult times um, at the club like I said with Pobre and Lukaku I think we need to offload them because us getting rid of them you know it's going to help us with our rebuilding process and of course um, it's going to help us out uh, with our uh, transition and I do believe we can generate around £200 million pounds, you know for the departures um, of Paul Pobre um, and Romelu Lukaku but I do believe, you know, we're act we are actually, you know, moving away uh, from the policy, you know, of uh, signing uh, them well-established um, uh, players. But quite a few people have said, you know, this summer, you know, we should be a uh, sensible uh, with our uh, current uh, recruitment um, and all that. Uh, but Solskjaer did say, you know, he wants to bring um, at least uh, five uh, new um, additions uh, to the squad. But allegedly, you know, we've only been given £100 million to spend, even though I thought we'd been initially given around £200 uh, million pounds to spend. And it did provide a reason why I say we've only been given £100 million pounds to spend, because obviously, you know, we're not in a uh, Champions League uh, football uh, for the uh, next season. Um but yeah, there's been so many midfielders um, on our agenda because we've got to get reinforcements in that midfield. We need a replacement for Herrera. Obviously, we need a replacement uh, for Paul Pogba, of course, I mean, if he does uh, leave uh, the football club. Uh, there has been a lot of talks, you know, going on uh, uh, today um, in regards uh, to Danny Olmo uh, from, you know, Dynamo Zagreb. Now, I've been updating you about him uh, today. He does reportedly say, you know, that Manchester United um, have inquired um, about um, his services. He did reportedly say Manchester United um, have put around um, a £35 million pound bidding uh, for, you know, Danny uh, Olmo. Um, he's um, only 21 uh, years of age, so he has still uh, got um, a lot of uh, development uh, in him. He's got two years uh, remaining on his contract uh, with Dino Zagreb. I think he has been um, at Dino Zagreb uh, since like what uh, 2014. I think he joined them um, as a 16 year old. Like I said, um, he's uh, 21 uh, years of age now. And I think in all competitions for Dino Zagreb, he scored uh, 26 goals um, in 102 games. So his stats um, are, are quite um, impressive, to be quite honest with you. But reportedly, Manchester United um, have showed an interest in quite a lot of other teams um, have showed an interest in him. So he has been subject to. Uh, to a lot of uh, transfer uh, speculation um, and all that. Um, it did. This was coming actually, you know, from uh, you know, um, Danny, um, Danny uh, um, Omlo's um, agent um, and all that. You know, he said, you know, Manchester United um, are interested um, in 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 his uh, client um, and all that. This is what you know. He's basically um, agent uh, said and reportedly, you know, we've put a bid in for him um, of around uh, thirty five uh, million pounds. But we've been interested in him, you know, reflecting on his impressive performances, you know, throughout uh, the European uh, Championship because he did, you know, put some good performances in, you know, throughout uh, the European uh, Championship. He can play as an attacking midfielder can uh, uh, Danny uh, Omlo he can also uh, play him um, as a winner so he can obviously you know, play him um, on each flank so he is uh, versatile so do you believe he would be uh, the right uh, solution uh, for Manchester United um, and all that obviously before he was at Dynamo Zagreb um, he did play uh, for Barcelona I think he did serve, uh, serve um, around uh, seven years um, in Barcelona's uh, youth academy um, and all that but you know there's been quite a few teams that have been in for him I think Bayern Munich have been in for him um by Munich have been in for him. I think Chelsea have inquired about him. Liverpool have inquired about him. Arsenal have inquired about him. Obviously, Barcelona have inquired about him. Borussia Dortmund have inquired about him. So, so many teams, um, you know, have been, you know, have, have uh, expressed uh, their interest in him. And reportedly, he did say, you know, he's attracted uh, to the Premier League. So maybe he would be keen um, on making a move uh, to the Premier League, uh, the play, because he believes uh, he'll probably, you know, rejuvenate um, his career um, and all that. So reports have been coming out today saying that Manchester United um, have been in for him. So obviously, you know, would see him um, as an adequate uh, replacement uh, for uh, Paul Pogba. But like, like I said, there's been so many uh, midfielders um, on our uh, current um, agenda. Um, obviously, as I've been um, updating you today um, as well, um, in regards uh, to you know, as, in regards uh, to Gareth Bale uh, from Real Madrid. Um, obviously, we do know that Gareth Bale has been relentlessly linked to move away from Real Madrid, and he has been relentlessly linked to move uh, to Manchester United. So the transfer saga does still, does still continue to persist um, about Gareth Bale. Gareth Bale has been linked to a move uh, to Old Trafford since like what 2012 or 13, and obviously, you know, the rumours um, have continued uh, to persist. Uh, since then, but obviously, you no know, Real Madrid did confirm at the end um, of last season. You know, obviously, you know, Zinedine Zidane did confirm that Gareth Bale uh, is no longer in his plans, and he all. 
and he also declared, you know, that Gareth Bale um, has no future um, at Real Madrid um, and all that. Uh, according to uh, Gareth Bale's um, agent, you know, he said that Gareth Bale um, has got no intentions um, of leaving uh, Real Madrid, so reportedly, you know, he does uh, feel uh, feel uh, settled uh, with Real Madrid um, and all that. But Gareth Bale to Manchester United, you know, could still uh, possibly um, happen because obviously now Real Madrid um, are heavily linked uh, with Paul Pogba and I think, you know, Real Madrid are orchestrating on, you know, including Gareth Bale um, as part of the as part um, of uh, as part of the deal, you know, for them to currently uh, sign uh, Paul Pogba. So reportedly, if Paul Pogba goes to Real Madrid, Gareth Bale, you know, could be a part of the deal because you know we've indicated that Paul Pogba is not for sale, but he did say you know would accept a bid in the region of around 150 million pounds. And obviously, you know, this is a figure that Real Madrid um, I've looked to you know to uh, currently meet. But I wouldn't want Gareth Bale um, at Manchester United. Like I said, you know, I have uh, got a strong uh, reservations um, about him. Um, he's too inconsistent now. Um, is Gareth Bale? You know, he's been inconsistent um, in the last uh, couple of uh, seasons uh, for Real Madrid. Obviously, he's still got three years uh, left. Um, on his contract uh, with Real Madrid and he's very very injury prone and plus um, he's aging up I think he's nearly 30 uh, years of age now but despite the fact that Gareth Bale um, is injury prone you know his uh, ratio is still very very good you know he's scored 102 goals in 231 games uh, for Real Madrid and I think he's provided around 64 assists and he ob obviously you know he's been um, at Real Madrid you know uh, six years um, and all that so his ratios are still uh, very very good but I just don't want Gareth Bale um, at Manchester United you know maybe some Manchester United fans you know would still be uh, keen on recommending him in um, if you'd asked me a couple of years ago you know I probably would have took a uh, Gareth Bale um, at Manchester United but I do believe you know these are better uh, solutions um, out there uh, than Gareth Bale but I think Gareth Bale um, is reluctant you know to uh, currently uh, leave uh, Real Madrid so reportedly Real Madrid want to include Gareth Bale as part of their deal uh, to sign uh, Paul Pogba so obviously that will convince us you know to uh, lower our asking price uh, for Paul Pogba because we have put a huge transfer fee on Paul Pogba and we've also put a huge uh, transfer fee um, on Ronald uh, Lukaku but I think Ole Gunnar Solskjaer you know he's doing everything he can you know, to try and convince Paul Pogba to remain um, at the football club and obviously it was initially in Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's plans you know, to actually you know, build them aside them around uh, Paul Popper. Um but I think he's doing everything he can, you know, to try and convince him to remain um, at the football club. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, I think, is set to hold talks with Paul Pogba, or, 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 you know, already has had a, a talks there with Paul Pogba um, in regards uh, to his future and all that. But I think Paul Pogba is set to hand in a transfer request to Manchester United, you know, so, so obviously, you know, Manchester United uh, can let him uh, join uh, Real Madrid. Because obviously, we do know for a very long time that Paul Pogba's first choice preference has been Real Madrid. And his likely destination, um, of course, um, has been Real Madrid. But it is Real Madrid and Juventus, um, of course, uh, that are battling out uh, for Paul Pogba's uh, service. Services um, and all that. Um that are battling out uh, for Paul Pogba's uh, services um, and all that but I still say you know, Real Madrid um, are the favourites you know, to uh, currently uh, sign but Real Madrid of course are not keen um, on the straight uh, cash uh, payment but obviously you know, uh, Paul Pogba you know, reports suggest out uh, last month saying that Paul Pogba um, is seeking uh, for a new challenge and you know he did basically you know he publicly um, admitted that he wants to leave uh, Manchester United uh, for the first time and he even did say that Paul Pogba you know, was even willing to uh, go um, on strike you know, to force a um, move away uh, from Manchester United but like I said Paul Pogba hasn't really been the fundamental player um, as we all thought I mean, would have been, but I still would say at this day and age in this market, you know, he's worth in the region around 140 um, or 150 million pounds. But maybe the couple of main factors reasons why Paul Pop wants to leave the football club because maybe he wants to be playing amongst better players and he isn't playing amongst good enough players at Manchester United. Maybe he wants to be, you know, playing um, in Champions League football, you know, maybe he wants to be, you know, um, winning stuff and competing and all that. So he isn't experiencing this at Manchester United, like I said. So maybe he is frustrated uh, with the lack um, of competitiveness, but he is only uh, 26 uh, years of age, he's Popper, and he has still uh, got him um, a lot of uh, years. Years ahead of him, but it is Real Madrid and Juventus that are battling out for his services. Obviously, you know, Real Madrid so far, I've got five players on the board this summer. Obviously, you know, they spent uh, just over 300 odd uh, million pounds. They spent 150 million pounds, um, of course, um, on Eden Hazard. I do believe Christian Eriksen is also on Real Madrid's agenda, and probably Christian Eriksen would be a cheaper solution for Real Madrid uh, than uh, Paul Popper um, and all that. But Paul Popper, I still think, is keen on making the move to Real Madrid. Obviously, we do know Juventus have set, stepped up their interest um, in the last uh, couple of uh, weeks. Obviously, you know, Juventus have been in negotiation with Paul Popper's um, agent, you know, Mini Raliola. He also confirmed a couple of weeks ago that the Juventus director um, had travelled uh, to London, you know, to hold their uh, negotiations with, with Manchester United over the possibility of re-signing Paul Popper um, and all that. Um, obviously, you know, Juventus have done good business this summer. You know, they've got Matty Stilett um, on the board. Um... Obviously, you know, they've got Adrian Rabbit on the board. Obviously, they've got Aaron Ramsey and that um, on the board. So, probably more than likely, you know, Juventus would have to offload one or two of their essential players uh, to fund the move uh, for Paul Pop because I don't think Juventus, you know, would be able to afford him um, outright. He did say Juventus are more than happy, you know, to offload one or two of their players uh, to fund the move uh, for Paul Pop. You know, it did say the players uh, that they are reportedly, you know, willing to offer us is Paul Dabala. Obviously, Paul Dabala has been on our agenda for quite some time. I also did mention, you know, they were willing to um, offer us Alexandro as part of the deal um, and all that. But I probably 
probably end up, I probably think Paul probably will make the move to Madrid. Um, obviously, the Juventus director, you know, recently I'm explaining of how much, you know, Juventus uh, love uh, Paul Popper because he did have, he did have four good years, I mean, Cherry, uh, did Paul Popper and all that. He exceeded expectation levels, but he hasn't really replicated this since he did uh, make uh, the return uh, to Manchester United. Obviously, we paid £89 million to him. Um, obviously, you know, um, he is um, our most um, expensive uh, signing um, and all that. Um, He is our most um, expensive uh, signing um, and all that. And obviously, Paul Popper's still got two years left um, on his current deal with Manchester United with an option uh, to extend it uh, by a further year. Reports were coming out the other week saying that we was willing to offer Paul Popper a long-term contract uh, worth up to around 500 grand a week in order to convince him to stay um, at the football club. And Paul Popper is the uh, most expensive player at the club. He's also one of the highest player players at the club because he's on around uh, 290 grand a week um, he's on his uh, current uh, deal. But Paul Popper's agent, Mini Raliola, at least in the last uh, you know, a couple of months, maybe even longer, has been in the pro process um, and find uh, Paul Pogba um, a new club um, and all that uh, but Paul Pogba you know has been subject to a lot of transfer speculation especially last year you know he was widely spoken about he was subject to a lot of transfer speculation you know based on his poor relationship with Jose Mourinho um, obviously he had a bad disputes with Jose Mourinho and obviously Paul Pogba got one of his best wishes of course when Jose Mourinho left uh, the club um, obviously Paul Pogba with the, you know, with the club has obviously you know, won the Europa League and the League Cup obviously that came um, in his uh, second season there uh, with Manchester United and we have seen glimpses of Paul Pogba's best form you know we're mainly saw it in that three month period of course uh, when Ole Gunnar Solskjaer you know, was uh, the interim uh, manager that's when we saw glimpses um, of Paul Popper's best form so he is arguably you know, still uh, one of the best uh, midfielders um, in the world um, and all that but I think Paul Popper now you know, wants a new challenge and he wants to uh, rejuvenate um, his career um, and all that so I probably do believe he will end up uh, making uh, the move uh, to Real Madrid but it's very very essential that the club anyway you know, do find um, an adequate uh, replacement for him but like I said you know, there's been quite um, a few midfielders um, on our um, agenda Obviously, the vast majority of Manchester United fans, you know, would probably, you know, like to uh, see uh, James Madison, you know, come in. Um, obviously, you know, there was a lot of talks about James Madison, you know, going on uh, the other week um, and all that. And he did allegedly say, you know, that he wanted to uh, meet up uh, with Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, you know, James Madison. And it reportedly said, you know, uh, that James Madison is allegedly interested in making a move to Manchester United. And I like him a lot, you know, he's um, only uh, 22 uh, years um, of age. Um, he is um, primarily um, an, attack of, um, an attacking midfielder, um, is James Madison. Um, like I said, 22 years of age. Um, he's British. Obviously, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer wants to recruit uh, British. Uh, talents uh, to Manchester United uh, this summer and you know last season was his first season in the Premier League you know uh, with Leicester um, his debut season was uh, last season he was involved in 14 goals last season he also created uh, more chances uh, than any other player so that just proves he's really really good um, at creating uh, chances um, he's got four years remaining on his contract with Leicester Leicester did get him last summer for Norwich uh, for around uh, £20 million pounds, and he did have a good couple of seasons in the Championship uh, with Norwich um, with Norwich with Norwich he had a good couple of seasons in the championship with them um, I think quite a few teams have been tracking him since he was um, a teenager um, at Coventry um, you know quite a few teams have been tracking him since he was a teenager at Coventry because obviously he was a product of uh, Coventry's um, academy I think he also had a loan spell um, in Scotland you know with Aberdeen but reports came out about this was it four or five weeks ago now saying that you know we emerged James Madison as a priority target um, and all that and he also said if Leicester were willing to sell him you know they would want um, around uh, £60 million pounds him. but again would be a good adequate uh, replacement uh, for uh, Paul Pop but um, Yari Tillemans, I think quite a few Manchester United fans you know, would like to see him uh, come in. I'm reading something up um, in talks about her today and it did say you know, Leicester um, are leading the race uh, for Yari Tillemans and reportedly they're on the brink you know, of currently uh, signing him because obviously you know, Yari Tillemans um, had been um, initially on loan uh, with Leicester you know, uh, since January um, and all that. So yeah, he's had around five, six months of experience um, under his belt um, in the Premier League. Um, obviously now um, he has uh, returned uh, to Monaco but Yari Tillemans did confirm he will not be uh, staying uh, with Monaco uh, next season. But I think, like I said, Yari Tillemans move to Manchester United is probably dependent on what happens with Paul Popper but I think you know uh, anyway we, 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 we uh, rejected the opportunity uh, to sign uh, Yari Tillemans um, according uh, to recent uh, reports um, obviously it did confirm a couple of weeks ago that we did rekindle our interest um, in Yari Tillemans and it reportedly said you know Manchester United you know were in negotiations with his agent um, over getting him um, a possible uh, deal uh, concluded them um, and all that uh, reportedly Yari Tillemans is, is valued at around £40 million by Monaco he is under contract to Monaco um, until 2022 but I think Leicester have been in talks for quite some time um, of getting you know Yari Tillemans um, on a permanent uh, deal so I probably will end up you know making another uh, move uh, to Leicester but only 22 uh, years of age you know still got a hell of a lot of uh, development in him I think also Manchester City inquired about his services also Tottenham had inquired um, about um, his services and obviously I think um, Arsenal at one point um, had inquired um, about um, his services but I don't see you know Manchester United you know getting uh, Yari Tillemans um, in so we've obviously seen him um, as a replacement uh, for Paul Popper um, 
Obviously, as I've been updating you as well, there has been um, a lot of talks um, about Giovanni uh, Lo Celso, you know, going on earth and rail base. Now, I still believe, you know, that Manchester United um, are very, very um, interested um, in Giovanni Lo Celso. Obviously, we do know uh, Tottenham um, have been in, in, in uh, for Giovanni Lo Celso. And even though Tottenham have co uh, got two players um, on the board uh, so far uh, this summer, they are still in there uh, for Giovanni Lo Celso. I think also Ryan Sessignon um, is on uh, Tottenham's um, agenda. Obviously, Tottenham so far this summer have got Jack Clark um, on the board from Leeds. They also, you know, got Tanguen Dumbele uh, from Lee and obviously uh, Tottenham when they did sign Jack Clark you know that was their first signing you know they'd made since uh, January 2018 um, and all that but I think it's initially in uh, Tottenham's uh, plans you know to actually you know, spend uh, fairly uh, bigger this summer because obviously Mauricio Pochettino you know, does uh, want uh, back in uh, this summer but Tottenham are still in there uh, for Giovanni Lo Celso but they are facing a uh, competition uh, from us um, obviously last season was uh, Giovanni Lo Celso's uh, uh, first season you know with uh, Real uh, Betis he spent the majority of uh, uh, last season um, on loan uh, with Real Betis um, obviously Real Betis did initially get him uh, from PSG uh, last summer obviously you know they paid a loan fee around £2 million uh, the, obviously they did have the option you know to buy so they had the option you know to make uh, the deal uh, permanent and obviously you know Real Betis did make the deal permanent uh, back um, in April by paying a further uh, by paying a further uh, £20 million pounds, um, and all that but last season was his first season uh, with uh, Real uh, Betis um, I think I do believe he's got a release clause um, around uh, £88 million pounds. he reported out uh, last month saying that you know uh, he, you know over a month ago and now should I say you know that Tottenham have been in negotiations um, over getting a deal concluded for Giovanni Lo Celso. and I think from Giovanni Lo Celso's, uh, perspective you know, he's, he, he was keen on making uh, the move uh, to Tottenham Tottenham have already had a bid turned down for him because it came out uh, last month or was it a couple of months ago now saying that Tottenham had put a bid in for him around £53 million pounds. but obviously you know, this was too insufficient for Real Betis so they obviously you know, turned it down because Real Betis um, have said you know they want somewhere in the region of around uh, £70 million pounds. of course if they are willing to offload Giovanni Lo Celso. he is 23 uh, years of age um, he is um, Argentinian uh, but if Real Betis do sell him obviously you no know, PSG do benefit from it because PSG do get a percentage um, of course um, of any uh, sale um, and all that uh, but yeah there has been um, a lot of talks you know about him you know currently uh, going on so I still believe um, he's uh, on Manchester United um, agenda so yeah there has been uh, so uh, many uh, midfielders um, on our uh, current uh, agenda um I, I, I do expect probably around four or five players, you know, to uh, to uh, leave uh, Manchester United. Uh, like uh, currently I'm um, said, obviously we know Valencia has left the club. Obviously, you know he served um, a decade uh, with Manchester United. Um, Obviously, you know, uh, Ander Herrera's left uh, the club um, on a free transfer. I do presume Damien and Marcus Rojo, um, of course, um, are going to be uh, leaving uh, the club. And I think we could get around 25 or £30 million pounds for their departures, like I said. Um, we know, I think, probably now De Gea's going to be staying. Uh, we also know now, of course, uh, that Juan Matter um, is going to be uh, staying um, and all that. Um, but yeah, you know, we do need to sell our players, you know, to help us generate funds um, and, of course, uh, rebuild uh, the squad. But we definitely uh, need um, a central uh, defender, you know. We need someone uh, that can go um, alongside uh, Victor Lindelof um, in our back line. Um, and all, you know, a vast majority of Manchester United fans I've been hearing have said, you know, we need uh, two uh, central uh, defenders because obviously we do know Smalling's not good enough. Obviously, we know that Phil Jones, um, of course, um, is not a good enough firm um, and all that because Smalling and Jones have been two long serving players at the club. Obviously, Smalling's been here nine years, you know, Jones um, has been here eight years, and it was bad business for Manchester United, you know, giving them two uh, new long term contracts. But we've got to get a central defender in and all that because, you know, we've got, def we've got issues defensively, and that was was proven last season because we conceded 54 goals um, in the Premier League last season in 38 Premier League games. Obviously, you know, that's our highest total um, in 40 years. So we've got to get a central defender in um, and all that. And we haven't had a world-class central defender, you know, since we had the likes of Vidic and of course uh, since uh, we had the likes um, of you know Ferdinand um, and all that. So we've got to get a central defender in. So there has been quite a few um, on our agenda, but I have been updating you on a regular basis, um, haven't I? Um, in regards uh, to Harry Maguire. Obviously, I give you the latest news about Harry Maguire today. I also, you know, give you uh, the latest news about Harry Maguire uh, yesterday. But I've obviously you not know, been updating you about him um, on a regular uh, basis. So it did report out yesterday, as I told you, you know, uh, from Sky Sports, you know, they basically said Manchester United um, had launched around the seventy million pound bidding uh, for Harry Maguire. Obviously, this is insufficient uh, for Leicester because Leicester have said you know they want around in the region, they want in the region of around eighty um, or ninety million pounds um, and all that. So potentially, you know, Leicester do want a world record fee for him um, and all that. Um, but it is Manchester United and Manchester City uh, that are battling now uh, for their um, services. So we did put seventy million. We put a seventy million pound bidding for him but obviously you know, Leicester um, had currently uh, turned uh, this down um, and all that but it is like I said Manchester United and Manchester City uh, that are battling out uh, for um, his services um, obviously a lot of reports reflected out uh, towards uh, the back end um, of last week saying that you know we'd pulled out of the race uh, for Harry Maguire you know reflecting on you know the extortionate amount that Leicester um, are demanding because Leicester said last week reportedly they wanted around £100 million pounds, so it did say they wanted £90 million up front you know with £10 million um, in add-ons um, and all that so it did say you know Manchester United um, of course um, had pulled um, out of the race but it did say now reportedly you know we 
are in poor position, you know, to currently assign our Harry Maguire, you know, reflecting on City's reluctance, because obviously, you know, City um, are reluctant, you know, to pay up to 80 um, or 90 million pounds. Um, obviously, a lot of reports uh, came out uh, the other week saying, it, well, it was looking likely he was set to sign for Manchester City the other week. He did say, you know, City were set to get him for the world record for your 80 million pounds. Obviously, this is making the most expensive defender in world football ahead of uh, Liverpool's Virgil van Dijk, who, of course, Liverpool paid 75 million pounds for. And it also said City were willing to pay him um, around uh, 280 grand a week. But, you know, the, the fee has been a stumbling block on that for Manchester City because City are not willing to pay um, uh, what Leicester are demanding. Whether Manchester United are willing to pay what Leicester um, are demanding them um, or not, um, I do, you know, not currently uh, know. But Sky Sports also mentioned, you know, that both Manchester clubs um, have been, you know, uh, both uh, talks have been ongoing, you know, between both Manchester clubs um, and Leicester, you know, for several weeks um, and all that. But it did indicate how in Sky Sports, you know, no deal is yet, you know, to be, uh, no deal is yet being um, agreed and no fee um, has yet uh, been um, agreed um, and all that. But Leicester, have, I think, have informed Manchester United, you know, they do uh, want them um, around 80 um, or 90 million pounds for them and all that. Um, but like I said, I think Harry Maguire's, uh, you know, preference, um, I think he uh, wants uh, to make uh, the move uh, to Manchester City, um, as he did uh, say uh, the other week um, and all that. Um, obviously, you know, City has seen Harry Maguire um, as, you know, their number one target uh, to replace uh, Vincent uh, Company. I think also City are considering, you know, off offloading um, Otamendi um, and all that. So if Harry Maguire does go to City, obviously, you know, he will be playing um, alongside uh, John Stones and he'll also, you know, be playing um, alongside uh, Laporte. But Leicester... Um, I mean, no rush to sell him, and looking at ultimate Leicester don't want to sell him, and this is the main factor reason why they've priced him out of the market. And of course, this is why uh, they are demanding him um, an extortionate um, amount uh, for Harry Maguire. And don't get me wrong, I think he's a really, really good central defender, um, is Harry Maguire, without a shadow of a doubt. You know, he's proven in the Premier League, he's 26 uh, years and vage, you know, he's still got a hell of a lot of uh, development um, in him. You know, he's really, really good in the air, he shows that ability to play out from the back. You know, I've got, I've got, mate, the reservation I've got about him is obviously, you know, his pace, you know, he isn't really faster, uh, Harry Maguire, but obviously, you know, he needs to uh, work on that. But I think He's got his physical attributes are um, really, really good. Like I said, um, obviously, you know, he, he probably wants to uh, rejuvenate um, his career, and I think he's indicated he, he would like to go to one of the top six clubs, you know, to rejuvenate his career, take his football in you know, her career to the next level, um, and all that. Uh, the only thing is, Manchester United can't offer, you know, Harry Maguire uh, Champions League uh, football um, and all that. But I think if we're willing to meet what Leicester are demanding, I think we've got a great, great chance of getting him um, on the board because I think it's in um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's plans, you know, to actually, you know, recommend um, an experienced centre back to come in, and I think Harry Maguire, you know, would definitely, you know, uh, be. Uh, the right uh, solution um, and all that. Um, also, as he updated you earlier on, it did say Arsenal um, had come in. Uh, you know, it said Arsenal tried to hijack um, our move uh, for Harry Maguire. And it did say, you know, Arsenal were willing to offer him um, up to around uh, fifty million pounds. Well, they had they had offered allegedly fifty million pounds uh, for um, his services, but obviously, you know, this is around thirty-four million pounds uh, less than what Leicester um, are currently uh, demanding. And obviously, Arsenal um, have got issues uh, defensively. And obviously, Arsenal, I think, have got to sell players now. You know, to help them generate funds and rebuild uh, their squad because Arsenal have only been. Given, they've got a tight budget, you know, they've only been given around 40 or uh, 45 uh, million pounds to spend, but again, Arsenal can't obviously not offer a Harry Maguire uh, Champions League uh, football, but he did say he wants to uh, make the move uh, to City, but he came out quite a few weeks ago about Harry Maguire and he said, you know, we, you know, um, came out a few weeks ago about Harry Maguire, you know, it did say, you know, Ed Woodward uh, was keen on recommending him, and it did say at that point, you know, we was willing uh, to pay um, up to uh, £80 uh, million pounds, uh, for um, his services, but Harry Maguire's been at last of two years, he's made 76 appearances in all competitions, obviously 69 of those um, appearances um, have come um, in the Premier League, obviously he signed a new long-term contract with Leicester last summer, so he's under contract with them um, until 2023, um, obviously Leicester paid £17 million pounds for him uh, from Hull back in 2017, he did serve a couple of years there uh, with Hull um, and all that, um, he served him um, a couple of years there uh, with Hull. Um, I think he also had a loan spell with Wigan and he actually you know, began his uh, career with Sheffield United. I uh, did Harry Maguire. But Harry Maguire has been one of our main priority targets you know, for quite some time. You know, He's been relentlessly linked to a move to Manchester United you know, since last summer. Because obviously, reflecting back, back last summer, Harry Maguire was one of the players uh, that Jose Mourinho currently uh, wanted. But obviously, we didn't get as a uh, number one uh, target uh, last summer um, and all that. So hopefully, we can get a deal uh, concluded uh, for Harry Maguire. And I said, if we did get a deal over the line for him, we probably would take uh, you know, uh, you know, spend, uh, spending this summer up to around 100, 140 or 150 million pounds um, or something um, like that but I think you know he would be a really really good buy and he would um, improve as you know uh, defensively um, and all that so I just wanted to recap you know what you know Sky Sports said uh, yesterday about Harry Maguire um, and all that uh, but yeah talks um, have been ongoing you know for quite uh, some time between you know the both Manchester clubs um, and Leicester uh, but you know Leicester obviously now reluctant to let him go this is why they you know they're demanding um, an extortionate um, amount for him but 
So yeah, there's been so many central defenders on our agenda, but obviously we know Matty Stillett was one of our main proud targets at one point, but obviously now Matty Stillett's totally out of the equation because obviously he's going to Juventus, or has her gone there to Juventus. Obviously, I think Koulibaly, I'm very, very sceptical about Koulibaly, you know, coming in now because obviously, you know, Napoli, um, I looked at, you know, to work on the um, offload him. Um, now, obviously, you know, we have uh, stepped up um, our interest um, in Issy Diop uh, from West Ham. Now, there has uh, been uh, talks um, about him, you know, currently uh, going on. Um, and I like um, Issy Diop. Um, what, what have I uh, seen of him um, anywhere? Now, reportedly, we are set to make um, our first uh, formal offer uh, for Issy Diop. Um, even though reports uh, did suggest out uh, last month, you know, we'd made a player plus cash offer uh, to West Ham for Issy Diop. So, it said reportedly we'd offered around £45 million. Pounds. It also says uh, we'd offered uh, Phil Jones um, as part of the deal. But, obviously, it did say allegedly West Ham um, didn't you know, turned uh, this down. Uh, Analysing it, West Ham don't want to sell Issy Diop because West Ham know how much of an imperative uh, player um, he is. But it did say, you know, West Ham, you know, would want um, around um, at least uh, £68 million. Pounds. But yeah, anyway, we're set to make our first uh, formal offer for him. I think we are set to offer around £45 million. Pounds. Obviously, I don't think this figure is going to be enough, you know, to convince uh, West Ham uh, to offload him. But, you know, we have been in for a CD op um, in the last uh, couple of uh, weeks and it did say he is, you know, keen um, on making a move uh, to Manchester United. Obviously, last season was his first season um, uh, in the Premier League, you know, uh, with West Ham um, and all that. I think he played around 33 games for West Ham last season. I think he played around 38 um, in all competitions. He's got four years left on his contract with West Ham. West Ham did get him last summer from uh, Toulouse uh, for around uh, £22 uh, million uh, pounds, um, and all that. But yeah, uh, seems to be an OK player. Um, he's very, very tall as well. He's six foot four, so I do presume he's very, very good in the air. Um, I think he's also a um, very, very good athlete. Um, is this year deal? Came out a couple of weeks ago saying that West Ham wanted um, Anthony Martial um, in exchange uh, for um, this year deal, but obviously we do know Manchester United know would be not willing there to go um, along with this um, and all that uh, but yeah there has been um, a lot of talks about Issy Diop going on looking at it from a financial point of view you know Issy Diop you know would be um, a cheaper uh, solution uh, than Harry Maguire from Leicester he would also substantially cost us a lot lesser than Koulibaly um, and all that uh, so you know would you like to see um, Issy Diop coming obviously he's had a year of experience like I said um, under his belt um, in the Premier League and I think his performances last season for West Ham uh, were really really um, impressive um, and all that um like I uh, currently have said, but I do believe our expectations, you know, going into this season, like I said, you know, will be to finish in the top five. You know, I don't think we'll be mounting any kind of mounting any kind of title challenge up. You know, I don't think we'll be winning uh, the league, uh, you know, going on um, into this season because uh, at the moment City has strides ahead of us. Obviously, you know, Liverpool um, has strides um, ahead of us, but I do believe our aspirations um, in the next couple of seasons, um, of course, um, is going to be uh, that top five um, and all that. Uh, but we need to see vast improvements, you know, going on um, into this season uh, without um, a shadow um, of a doubt, like I said. And I hope, I'm hopeful it works out under Ali Gunnar Solskjaer. Like I said, he was a great player for Manchester United for 11 years. Um, has got a bit of experience as a manager, but not really uh, to the highest their level um, and all that. But like I said, you know, uh, we know we haven't got the structure to keep sacking managers, and we've already sat three since Ferguson retired. So I hope you know it does uh, work out um, under um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer um, and all that. But he knows the club um, inside out. Like I said, he great player. You know, he managed the Manchester United reserve team uh, for a couple of uh, years um, and all that. Um, so I'm very very hopeful it does work out under him. Uh, we do know a lot of money's been spent at Manchester United. Uh, you know, since Ferguson uh, retired, you know, I've had different managers with different philosophies but we have been a toxic club for the last uh, five um, or six years and the main factor reason why we've been a toxic club because we've been mismanaged obviously this is the main factor reason why of course uh, we have uh, been um, underachieving um, and all that you know a hell of a lot of money's been spent like I said you know players have come in and of course uh, players um, have gone um, and all that uh, but like I said there's still lots to address um, in the squad and we do need a um, massive overhaul this summer I said back in May you know we need to be a uh, ruthless um, in this summer transfer window and we've got to be competitive um, in this uh, summer uh, transfer window but quite a few people said you know we should be a uh, sense uh, with our recruitment uh, this summer um, and all that but the good news is now like I said um, about uh, Bruno uh, Fernandes anywhere Manchester United now um, have, have had breakthrough um, in Bruno Fernandes I've made uh, Manchester United do make uh, uh, breakthrough um, in Bruno Fernandes' talks and all that uh, reportedly it has confirmed that Bruno Fernandes' agent um, has obviously you know, come uh, to England you know, to thrash out um, a deal uh, for um, his client and now that Manchester United and um, Sporting has been a reached an agreement reportedly it says you know we've, re we've um, agreed around the 100000 pounds a week contract with Bruno Fernandes the personal terms have been agreed um, and all that but no fee um, of course um, has yet you know come to um, an agreement and obviously there's a lot of trustworthy in this Bruno Fernandes story because obviously you know it's actually you know come out uh, from Sky Sports uh, today you know saying that uh, we've stepped up we've uh, you know that we obviously you know are still uh, chasing uh, Bruno uh, Fernandes but Sporting has been one somewhere in the region of around 55 million pounds Manchester United of course I think are reluctant you know to pay that so we want to get Bruno Fernandes for around uh, 31 million pounds so the fee does seem to be the stumbling block um, at uh, the moment so anyway guys drop your comments slides below on the channel um if you do consider subscribe to the channel um as always and take care god bless and i'll see you all again very very soon thanks for watching